So now that we've applied our AVAC policies, let's jump back into Unity Catalog and figure out how we can get our data to Power BI. So we'll go ahead and open the Unity Catalog Catalog Explorer, and we can go back to our Bakehouse and uh, Bakehouse Fabcon Catalog and Cookie Schema. So again, within this schema, we've applied a bunch of ABAC policies so that we can uh, basically enforce that folks in North America can only see North American data. Um, what we've also done is, you know, we did a little bit more modeling on our tables and we added some primary keys and foreign keys, which is super cool. Um, so if we go to our transactions table, we can even see the relationships here inside of Databricks. Um, this actually, you know, this is great from a, a relationship, a table or data relationship perspective. It's super important, not only for visualizing the, you know, relationships between our data sets, uh, but also for so that Unity Catalog has semantic understanding of our data. So when we're using things like AI BI Genie or, you know, we're running uh, DLT pipelines, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, goodies that are going on behind the scenes because Unity Catalog understands your data and how it's interrelated. So back to the schema level. So we have our cookies data and we need to get this to Power BI. And, you know, right from within Unity Catalog, uh, we can use this uh, publish to Power BI feature, which would basically take our entire schema or some subset of tables and publish that to Power BI. Um, and, you know, it handles authentication. Can You can use different query modes. It works great. It's great for ad hoc publishes and updates. But part of me really wants to make this part of my core data pipelines. Uh, and before today, we couldn't. But I'm really excited to share that Databricks Jobs has a new Power BI task type in public preview starting today. So let's head over to jobs. So we've got uh, you know, an existing retail analytics job. What this does is basically aggregates all my, my data together. Uh, it's an incremental pipeline. So it's grabbing CDC data from the source and then running incremental uh, transformation. So it's isolating that those transformations just to the net new records. So it's super efficient, fast, and it ultimately saves some money. Um, and then what we do normally is we would publish to Power BI, but I'm gonna show you what would happen if we, um, you know, basically we're using this Power BI task type. So we'll create a new job and we'll name our job EBI Ask um, Big House. And what we'll do is we'll select from the list and we'll go to Power BI. So this is the new task. It auto selects the, um, the SQL warehouse that will be used either in import mode, dual storage mode, or direct query. Yes, this task supports all three. So you get all of the, the best of all worlds. Um, we'll select the Power BI connection. And all this connection is, is a new Unity Catalog securable object that allows you to grant and revoke access to uh, basically what maintains communication between Databricks and Power BI uh, so that we can publish uh, semantic models on your behalf and make updates and all that fun stuff. Um, then we'll select the Power BI workspace, Bakehouse, and then we will actually just publish a new semantic model. Sorry, Bakehouse, Babcon, Cookies, publish new semantic model. Awesome. So this is gonna be a brand new semantic model for the first run when we run this. And then every time we run this after, if there are changes, updates, uh, you know, if it's in import mode and needs to be refreshed, Databricks Jobs and this new task type takes care of all of that for you. Cool. So uh, we're going to add our tables. So we'll go to the cookies schema in Bakehouse Fabcon. And we'll just select a subset of these tables for now. But, you know, there's some tables that might pop into the schema later that I might want to include in my model. So I can always select the select schema button, which basically lets me include uh, future tables that are added or views or streaming tables and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and confirm. Uh, example, we're going to use direct query mode, but we could use import mode or dual storage mode so we can really take advantage of the full ecosystem in Power BI. Um, and let's see, we're not going to overwrite an existing model, but what's great about this is you get all of the great capabilities in Databricks jobs. So you can set things like duration thresholds to you know, prevent long running jobs. In this case, this is a very quick um, you know, publishing task, but uh, you know, if you wanted to set that, you could. You can set notifications to route to Teams or Slack or uh, you know, a venue of your choosing. 
You can also set retries. So if, you know, for some reason there's a failure as happens with data pipelines, um, you can let Databricks jobs handle retrying it for you. Yeah, and this is, uh, that's about it. There's, you know, just one more call out. We'll go ahead and save our task, but there's one more call out with Databricks jobs. Um, historically, most folks would probably schedule a job on some kind of temporal basis or, um, you know, that could be a nightly, it could be once an hour, once every 30 minutes. Um, which is great when you know exactly when your data is arriving and that's all great, all fine and dandy. But what happens if you have sporadic data um, or data loading pipelines? Um, so what's really neat is in Databricks jobs, we still give you the option to use um, temporal schedules or, you know, scheduling based on cron, cron syntax. Um, but we also give you the, uh, the ability to trigger based on file arrival. So this would be akin to, you know, a CSV or text file dropping in an ADLS Gen 2 bucket or very soon you'll be able to schedule or trigger based on table updates. This is incredibly game-changing because like I said before, we have this existing pipeline that's already fully incremental. It's just isolating processing to the data that's coming in that's net new, transforming it, scoped down to just that net new data. And basically we go and manually publish that to Power BI today. Um, but with this Power BI task type and this new table update trigger type, we can make sure that processing is incremental and that the pipeline runs only when it needs to. Ultimately, this saves you time, cost, uh, and is just much more efficient than before. So again, we could add tables. We can add any number of tables. We can set this to trigger when all tables are updated or only when some are updated. Uh, it's really, really neat. So we're not going to set a trigger now, but we're going to run this manually right now. And what this will do is run super quickly. And at the end of the day, we will have a semantic model in Power BI, which I will show you shortly. Awesome, so our job succeeded. We can open this in Power BI. Once in Power BI, we can view the semantic model. We can open the data model. And we can see that the relationships that we already had applied in Unity Catalog apply right here in Power BI. That's awesome. Uh, but what's even better is because we're using direct query mode, all of the ABAC policies that we applied and the, um, you know, the geosensitive uh, data that we're filtering for for the North America group, all of that is retained all the way through to the end, you know, to our end users. Um, so if, if those end users are in North America, they should only see North American data. Um, so really cool stuff. Uh, we have our semantic model in Power BI. Um, awesome. So just to recap, we uh, we took our secured and governed data from Unity Catalog and made it available to Power BI through this new task type in Databricks jobs called the Power BI task. And we can do this scope to just when there are changes in our source data um, or upstream tables or whatever we'd like. The best part is this supports all open Power BI query modes for full flexibility. It also supports overwrites. Um, you know, what, so that could be changes to your source schema, your data, your relationships, all of that seamlessly gets reflected in Power BI, no matter what query mode you're using. So how awesome is that? I'm really, really excited to share that, again, this Power BI task in jobs in Databricks is available in public preview today. Please give it a try and let us know what you think.